Hey everybody, Wally Renee here, and I'm super pumped to talk about importing STL files to mill in your chair side mills, whether it's a 30S, 40S, 40, whatever you have, Climeca is open, right? So you can mill literally any STL file, and you all have seen me mill little Yodas and all sorts of little trinkets and whatnot. But there's some little eccentricities and tips that I want to convey to you before you start trying to mill random STL files. So first of all, how cool is it that we can mill STL files? Um, many other chair side systems block you from doing that, but Here's an STL file that I'm loading in, um, and this is from True Abutment, which is, in my opinion, the best custom abutment manufacturer in, in the United States right now. So they designed this for me. I didn't even design this. They're sending me the abutment in the mail, but I'm going to mill this restoration in-house um, for the cost of one block, and I'm going to go ahead and run this quality simulation under detail. So if you notice there, I went up to settings, the little gearbox, I switched to quality simulation. So Many of you guys run simulations on your daily chair side workflows when you're doing inlays, onlays, and crowns, and you look and see how it's going to fit on the prep. We don't have a prep, so what do we look? How do we compare this to something to know if it's going to be a good fit or not? Well, quite easy. You compare it to the original STL file, which is there in white. So I turned on the original STL file from True Abutment. I'm going to cross section this and look, and the blue represents what's actually going to be milled, and this is. You know, Plameca has the best algorithms here. This is actually what's going to mill um, down to the down to the micron. So you'd be able to compare it, it immediately to the original file. And if you see discrepancies, most likely you're going to get fit issues. But but here I've milled this in detailed mode under the simulation, and I see zero discrepancies. This is going to be an absolutely perfect fit. I already know ahead of time. I could go ahead and mill this with confidence. I'm not going to waste my block. And so well, let me zoom in here. In what you're looking for are these two lines. See that they're they're almost coincident there. One represents um, one represents the actual STL file. The other one represents what's going to be milled. And you can see in the embrasures, those deep embrasures that we're not milling deep into those embrasures. No mill will mill deep into those embrasures like that. Um, so this is what we're going to get. So now I'm going to go up to settings. I'm going to switch to quality again because it defaults off of quality and speed. And I'm going to go to to standard. Okay, so standard is the ellipsoidal burr, the giant, giant burr. And let's see if that can mill this out. Well, why would you want to do that? Well, it's faster to mill with the ellipsoidal, less burr breakages. Um, but look what happens. So when we mill this and simulate this, once again, quality simulation in standard mill mode, um, we have a profound discrepancy between the STL file that was sent to me and what's actually going to be milled. And this discrepancy is going to lead to a, a certain degree of misfit um, where you're going to have binding on the intaglio surface and you're going to spend hours grinding it with you know some type of indicator paste or occlude and you're going to be stressed and you're going to be like this technology doesn't work I don't understand when in reality it's not that the technology doesn't work you just need to understand it and here we can see these two lines the bottom line represents what's going to be milled because of standard mode because of the giant honk and burr is not going to be able to replicate that anatomy that was created from the lab for this abutment the top line represents that top kind of line right here. That little line represents the actual STL file, what should have been milled, but is not being milled. So you can see here we have um, around a millimeter of discrepancy there, which of course, when you go to seat this restoration on your custom abutment that you're super excited about, you just got back from the lab, you paid 200 something bucks for or whatever, um, and it doesn't fit. So now you just wasted a block and now you're even more upset and then you're, you mill it again and it doesn't fit again and you mill it again doesn't fit again and you're like what's going on well we could work all this out before we actually have to mill something within seconds so let me show you another scenario okay that scenario was I needed to mill in detailed mode not standard mode well, what about another scenario I'm gonna bring in a restoration not from true abutment this is just from a, another laboratory and this laboratory had no idea what to do or what to send me they sent this random STL file that they set up on their five axis mill for some you know, some other mill. And they're like, yeah, man, just go ahead and mill it. And I'm like, well, you know, one thing is they need to know what tools you're using to mill um, that create the appropriate offset and appropriate intaglio crown bottom for you, for your mill, for your burrs. So you need to be in communication with them and they need to know that you have a three, four axis mill. So look at this, because of the orientation of this particular restoration that was set up in their um, kind of software, and appropriate for probably a five axis mill to be able to get in there. But because of the orientation, our mill is not going to mill any of this. The crown is rotated on the Z axis completely wrong. Um, it's, it's, it's rotated 
on on all planes actually. So we'll see. Let's see what's wrong with this crown. Let's bring it into Mesh Mixer. Mesh Mixer is a free software you could download from Autodesk. And let's drag the STL file. And we can see here. Um, you see how if that build platform represents the horizon, we're crooked, and we're going to need to rotate that up and make it perfectly flat on that on that plane there. What that plane actually represents for our mills is the mill axis. So um, you could imagine one burr coming from the bottom of that plate, another burr coming perfectly from the top, all perpendicular to that flat plane. So what I like to do if I have a screw hole is set that screw hole up perfectly perpendicular at a 90 degree angle, if you imagine that tube, to the build platform. And then I'm going to re-export this file just as a binary STL, and I'm going to reload it into Planmeca software into the into the PlanCAD Easy import feature, and go ahead and, and mill it, um, or sim it at least, and see, did we get better? Okay, so remember before it wasn't milling anything. It wasn't milling the intaglio or the hole or anything. And this is also what you have to do if you're doing your own kind of in-house tie base workflow. Um, reorientate these, like, look at this. this. So this is a quality simulation on detailed mode. We have an absolutely perfect mill. I could already tell this is a perfect mill. You could see that little kind of speckled look this mill is so this mill is going to come out so gorgeous you're going to think that those margins were like laser welded onto that abutment um so for those of you who you know i have my i do these macro photos of my fits and you wonder how i get such perfect fits it's just understanding the system so now i went back and i redid um under standard mill mode and look at these discrepancies that we're getting we're going to have once again a, a, a lot of binding so guys Run a simulation, check your orientation. If it's from true abutment, just literally mill it in detail mode and you'll never have issues. If it's from another uh, manufacturer, you might have some issues, but um, I'm always here to help. So just reach out to me and let me know if you have any specific problems and I'll see if I could troubleshoot it for you. Thanks.